Over there and breathe these people just a little bit, what your eyes would behold. I tell you, the leaders that the Lord is bringing forth now, I have never in my life seen God moving in such body way and delivering people. Down in Belgrade, in the, in the meeting there in Florida, the people, they came. Uh, I just thought it was just going to be a regular meeting, which all the meetings are all, never, Brother Terrell's meetings are never regular meetings. But I mean, those people came in by the droves, and they packed that place out, and every miracle that you can even name, crippled, blind eyes, I mean, people that was on machine, every notable miracle that you can behold was wrought in that miracle. And the souls that were being saved, Brother Terry would, would have an altar call and just literally hundreds and hundreds of people would just come running out of those aisles and just fill up the altar. All type of people getting saved. And we baptized, I don't know how many people, old people, young people, children and all getting baptized. Preachers getting baptized. Bap and the Holy Ghost falling on folks. It was so many, the Holy Ghost was falling on so many Baptist folks. I told uh, Brother Ward or somebody that was next to me, I said, I'm going to have to turn Baptist. The Holy Ghost is falling. Baptist preachers were getting the Holy Ghost. Whole Baptist churches was coming out getting the Holy Ghost. And Brother Terry just laid hands on people. I mean, they weren't taking them all night and they weren't no struggling. He just slapped hands on them and the Holy Ghost falling. They just falling out speaking in tongues. The power of God just overshadowed It was God is moving. I mean, if we ever need to get in these meetings, I mean, this is the time of our deliverance, yeah. our healing, yeah. our salvation, yeah. and miracles. And if you ever got that tape on deliverance from witchcraft, the sin of witchcraft, let me tell you, that a tape that this whole nation and the whole world need to have. There is no message that's ever been uttered for by a human man is likened to this message that you're going to hear. God gave Brother Terrell a vision, and thou, I, I, once you hear this message, you're going to see that really most of us had witchcraft bound by witchcraft in a certain way, and didn't even know it. It is a message like unto you will never see. I mean, and Brother Terrell delivered folks that night. God through him delivered people from the, from the sin of witchcraft, and once you hear this message, it is something that you will never turn away from. A sister came that night who are uh, sitting in the meeting and heard God through Brother Terrell preaching this word on the sin of witchcraft and she received it. And Brother Terrell was an, had anointed cloths uh, for people to wear. And I brought a bunch of them back to my wife. My, I, the first thing I, when I got home, that's the first thing my wife ordered, one of those cloths that I had got from the meeting. And she was, this woman was in that meeting, she was in that service when Brother Terrell was preaching and she received I mean, that word spoke to us to let us know things that we did not know. And children of God, her husband was in that service tonight. He, that same night, and he had come. He didn't mean no good. The lady testified and said he didn't mean no good. He actually came there to do her harm. But she knew that that word was coming forth, and she received it. She grabbed one of those anointed crows, and she kept it with her. And I believe that night that a demon had done took over that man. You could tell that the, the powers of hell, they was mad how God was delivering folks from the sin of witchcraft. She went home. When she got home, the man 
her husband drove up. He tried to make her open the roll the window down so he can get in the car, but she wouldn't do it. He even picked up a rock and gonna break the glass and get in, but she held up that club. She held up that prayer club. I got one on me right now. Hallelujah. She held up that, that prayer club. And for some reason, unknown to him, he wouldn't break that glass. He tried and tried and tried, and he wouldn't, she wouldn't let him get in. She just prayed to God, held a hold of that prayer club, and God wouldn't let that man get in that car. He went on up to, to Pahokee, which is about 10 miles, I think, up the road, to his girlfriend's house. Hallelujah. <laughs> and his girlfriend shot him down, gunned him down. But that woman was protected because she believed in a prophet. She believed what a prophet said. And God kept her and sustained her. And about, she went in and she said she couldn't get in the house until about 3 o'clock. But about 5 o'clock that, that morning, she got a call and was told that her husband had been shot by a girlfriend. She came back and she knew she testified because she was in that service, because God delivered his people that night from the sin of witchcraft. She had one of these anointed clothes. Hallelujah. She knew that God had protected her. Children of God, I'm telling you, deliverance is going forth in these survivors. Hallelujah. And something else she said, she said when they called and told her that he'd been gone down, said a bird was lifted off her shoulders. <laughs> Didn't she? And she said, my mind, said I ain't even got it in my mind to go see him. <laughs> her a Baptist woman, and for the first time, she believed. You know, it's these low-down Pentecostal folks that don't want to believe no more. But I'm glad I've taught you not to be Pentecost, and I hope you ain't. From the uh, 14th chapter of Luke, beginning at verse 25, that went out a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, hate not his father, and mother, wife, and children, brethren, and sister, and yet his own life also, he cannot be my disciples. Whosoever does not bear his cross, come after me, cannot be my disciples. For which of you intended to build a tower, says not down first, and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, as happy after he hath laid the foundation, is not able to finish it, all that he be behold, it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build, was not able to finish. Or what king goeth to make war against another king, set it not down first, and consider whether he be able consult whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand, or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sent an ambassador and desire conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, thou brother, but say not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if the salt is lost its savior, whither shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dung hill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, Thursday morning, I didn't get to lay down until about 8. And I pretty near went on off to sleep. And I went into, I rather went into deep sleep at the time. But I was in a dead sleep when I had this dream. So I tell this part as a dream. In this dream, the Lord come to me in a halo, and I only saw this part of him, the Lord Jesus. And before he came to me in this halo, 
something had moved on me or he had spoken to me but not you know in an audible voice but he just spoken to my spirit and let me know in my heart and I was taking all of my unnecessary things that I preached all over the world it's like this brother here gave me this clock I have uh, things that from all over the world that people have given me I sold uh, back in the 70s I sold a lot of stuff that people give me from all over the world and put the money in for soul winning I mean there's lots of it and clothes and shoes well he came and, he, and, and it was just like invisible he was with me and he was showing me all of my stuff in my home probably in my home there at Brownwood too and I was gathering up all of my precious things these are precious they're priceless now you couldn't set a, a price on uh, on this or this or this a man just made me a chair out of them but you couldn't hand me it out of San Antonio. You couldn't put a price on that. You couldn't put a price. A man gave me a maple uh, bed, a queenside maple bed uh, 15 years ago. You can't even buy beds like that no more. If you bought a bed like that, it cost you five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. I mean, if you put care of that right, people, they'd pay that. The priceless and guns I have just guns and cowboy boots I can't wear cowboy boots on the on count of the arch of my foot I have a high instep here and I'd have to have a special made boot for that because it hurts my feet and I'm not that crazy know how uh, I do if I ride a horse I like to ride boots use boots I usually get them a, a pair like that something bigger but I've got I ain't no telling how many pair of boots that people have given me and all kinds of precious things guitars steel guitars and Things that people want, uh, any woman took her seven months to make a, an owl basket. And they sell them in Germany in a gift shop for two or three thousand dollars. The people of Europe. And the Lord was telling me to said, take all these unnecessary things and said, sell them in the dream. And I was gathering them up and I was placing them in a truck, not throwing them, but placing them carefully where they wouldn't be scarred or mashed. And I carried them to Texas, Canada. And gave them to Sister Bunny. I told her in the dream, I said, you take these and sell them. I said, now don't, don't let people come in here and get them for nothing. These are priceless things. As they buy these things out China, that they pay the price for them. As some of these guns cost five, six hundred dollars a piece. And I said, they're still worth it. But they're mine. The guns I've hunted with, I've kept them clean. Guns that I've shot. As these boots, some, some, some people give me boots cost three hundred dollars. Well, some people like to come in and offer you twenty-five dollars for them. But they, they just, they, even they, they cost more now than they did, they, than, than they did all of these years. And she sent out a, a card through the mail in the dream. And people came from everywhere. It's was, it was like there was auction and people were bidding, people were paying high price. They wanted these precious things, above the turtles. And I said, you take half of it. And put it toward building your tabernacle over here, and I'll take the other half. If you'll do this, I'll take the other half. 
And I'll put it for souls. I'll put it for souls. I said, God has showed me that this thing be the biggest bunch of souls saved. And he's fixing to do something. And I want to get in on it. And I want to be part of it. And he's told me to do this. And I mean, I had a load of stuff. And, and I, I woke up out of that dream. I was just in a deep, like a dead sleep. I woke up just suddenly. And I felt the Spirit of the Lord so rich and so real and so close to God. I got up and went to the restroom. Now, I'd been a, I don't remember tossing, trying to go to sleep when I laid down at 8 o'clock. I'm sure I probably went to sleep pretty quick. And it was 2 o'clock Eastern time. And I come back when I knelt on my knees. I looked at the clock and it was 2 o'clock. I got on my knees at the foot of the bed and I prayed. I said, God, I began to pray. I said, Jesus, are you showing me something? Are you trying to show me something? I said, if you're trying to show me something, show me. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. I don't want to do nothing myself. Nothing. Nothing means nothing. I've got uh, a Bicentennial uh, Martin guitar that was, they don't do this but every hundred years. There's no price. It's a collector's item. I've got two more guitars. It's a collector's items. I've got original the, the, the collector's item of the Dobro guitar is given to me. They're a collector's item. They don't make them no more. And, and you couldn't just put a, you, you couldn't put a price. I mean, when it's given to me, the man, uh, the new ones are selling $1,000 on them Dobros. And, and that was in the 60s. And it was brand new then. And they done quit making them. A long time before that, and you can't get the Dobros no more. People that's got Dobros, you couldn't buy them. They got them in museums. These things, you may think Hank Williams' stuff is priceless, but I tell you, Hank Terrell's stuff is more priceless. Because his ain't got the blessings on it. His ain't got the love behind it. His ain't got the spiritual touch on it. Ain't that right? And so I went into deep prayer and I went into vision right there. And in this vision, but in the dream just before it was over, the Lord appeared to me in that halo and he said, take all your unnecessary things, your precious things, unnecessary, and sell them. And put it in the souls. And then I woke up. And I went to the restroom to come out and I began to pray in that deep spirit. And I went into vision. This time the Lord appeared to me in that halo. Round halo. Great big. Big as a, a big wheel. But he was in the, like this. was in it. Glowing in that gold halo. Golder than the sun is in the evening. And he said, Whosoever that does not deny himself, now this is the Bible, whosoever that does not deny himself and take up the cross and bear the cross daily. Cannot have part in this revival. He said there is a revival broke, breaking out. And said, whosoever does not have part, deny himself, and take up the cross and bear the cross, cannot be a part of this revival. You know, he told me years ago this was a sold out. You remember? And he cast a lot of us out. I remember in 70, I saw a lot of people driven out. They got out of hand, and I began to let everybody, he said, not so. And he drove them out, said, these don't have no burden, they ain't got nothing invested. 
they ain't got nothing in it. And if they get in it without anything, they don't have nothing in it, they'll tear it up and be like all the rest of the revivals. But said if they've got something in it, he said, tell the people to sell their possessions and give it. Now, he didn't say give half of it. Now, you, people misuse that part. He said to sell their possessions and give it. Pay their debts. Pay what they, their, their debt out of You know what they owed on it. And give it. And invest it in this great field of souls. Then he said, the dividends, the blessing for doing it, to give half of that. 50 or 60 percent of that. And God would bless what's left. And it'd be more than the whole thing. And that's what the vision was. All he preached had twisted it. There was never nothing about that other. That was after you put into God's kingdom that the Lord, as you put into this field that the Lord blessed you for doing it, you doing it caused such a blessing. And then God said the blessing, the increase, the first fruits, the blessings for obeying, the dividends, the interest. And I'll tell you something. Did you know God said that he pays more interest? You know it's in the Bible? That God uh, said the money you give to him, he pays more interest on it than you put it in the bank? The man, the Bible teaches that. The Bible teaches that God pays you more interest. It's, it's written in the Word. Jesus said it. Jesus taught that when you put your money into exchangers, that you get more interest. He doubles it. He doubles the interest. I mean, he teaches. That's why you search out, look at that's interest. You put your money in the bank, you might get 10%, 8%, 7%, 11%, 11%. But Jesus, didn't, he don't give like that. The Bible said he doubles the interest. When you give it to him, put it in his hands. You put it in his case, it's written. If you look that up, what he said, it's interest. It comes with the word interest. Your dividends, your, your, your earning, your interest. Your royalty. From doing it. And the Lord told me that in 70. That they have no part of this revival because they don't have nothing in it. People ain't got nothing in the kingdom. They don't care nothing about it. But if you got something in this church, then you're going to want to stay with this church and suffer the crisis with it. You got something in this ministry, you're not going to run off. If I go through persecution, you want to fight to see this thing come through. Well, in the vision, he appeared there in that halo, and he said, if any man come out to me, who's ever, come out to me and the don't deny himself and take up his cross and bear the cross. He put that in, bear the cross. Follow me daily. He has no part in this ministry of this revival, of this revival that is now coming forth. He said, I spoke to you in a dream to sell your unnecessary precious things. He said, a revival is now breaking out and if you don't deny yourself and forsake and get rid of all this he said you can't have part in this revival that's what he told me he wasn't just talking to me what he tells me the word of the Lord come to me it's to you too and on Monday of this week, I had a vision. Y'all remember, in 62, I had a vision, and a revival broke out, and they was persecuting us, and, and the hand come and picked up, we'd fly like a bird. And I and the Lord gave me the scream, even as, as Philip was caught up, the Ethiopian saw him, even as Elijah was from one mountain to another mountain, so shall this gospel be preached. And I saw him 
they'd be here, but they'd be in some other country, and they'd be flying like a bird. Well, Monday I had this vision, and this glorious feeling come on me. And it started in my feet. It wasn't, it was, I know it had to be the Holy Ghost, because that's all the spirit they are, is the Holy Ghost. But it didn't feel like I felt the Holy Ghost, you know. I felt real good. At times, and I felt, I feel a, a great feeling when, when I know I'm going to work a miracle for God. When that woman so braced up, had braces high in her, foot above her head, bolts all the way through her head, brought her in dying, I knew she was going to be well. And you couldn't even touch her. Boat neck, busted head, busted rib, busted back. Braces all the way down here. And God miraculously give her a cure. And in Tulsa, there was a man that was paralyzed, and I spoke real firm to the devil and to loose him in a real firm word of healing and a miracle. And I told him to get up and pick his, and he couldn't even put both hands, couldn't pick his leg up. But I knew I felt the power, and I just leaned back over on his head prayed a prayer in my heart, nobody cared. I said, now God, for all this I'm preaching, it's so. As I'm preaching that you're gonna uh, raise up millionaires. I'm preaching that a revival's breaking out. I'm preaching that, that you're fixing to do something you ain't never done on earth. That the dead's gonna be raised. That the greatest revival man's ever witnessed is gonna be whole. This is what I told him in my heart. I said, if this is so, I said, I'm gonna tell this man to get up out of his chair and walk. And I said, he'll walk. And I didn't and say nothing then. All I did was put my head on. People just thought I just, just had my head over on his head. When I got through, I just touched it. I said, I get up and walk. And he just got out of that chair and just, like nothing wrong, and paralyzed. Couldn't even move his feet. Been that way for 11 years. Pushed me across, back and forth. Healed, pushed that wheelchair out of there. Healed. He so what'd you do that for? Well, I just felt in my heart that I needed a confirmation. And if I needed a confirmation to me, I don't know what is. And at the time, I said a little things to the Lord like that for confirmation. You have too. If you got in faith, you have. And it works. I said it works. And Monday when this feeling come over me, it's like I had a, like a, a, a weather coat like I wear. Oh, someone gave me a cape that made out of the same stuff, something like that cape. But I'm sure it had buttons on it. But I had it on, and I done like this. That feeling gone. Done like this. And I went straight up in the air, way up, and I began to fly like this through the air, like gorgeous feeling. And I was laying on my feet in the midst of a bunch of people. Wicked and sinful and needed help. And I began to minister. And as I began to minister, God began to deliver. And then sometime it'd be persecution. And some would try to hurt me. And that feeling, when the feeling leave me when it land on my feet. Just like I just like I am right now. And then the feeling come back on me. But just before they get to me, I'd fly up. And it happened about three or four different times. This is Monday. And I was flying. And carrying this word. The Spirit was catching me. And about three years ago, if you remember, I had a vision. I told the pilot to take me up there. I want to go to South America. He wouldn't do it. He said, I'm not, I can't fly to South America. I said, well, you take me up there and let me jump out and I'll fly. And he said, wouldn't do it. But I got him in, up there and when he got me up there, I opened the door and I jumped out and I flew to South America. Y'all remember me telling that vision several years ago. And then I had the vision. You know, Paul was caught out of his body, or he didn't know whether he was or not. He said, I don't know whether I was out of my body in my body. All I know, I was caught up. John was caught up. John was caught up. And Paul, he didn't say that his body was behind. He said, all I know, I was caught up. Don't worry, my body's with me or not. 
But I know Elijah's body's caught up. I know Enoch flew. Elijah flew. And the Bible said this is Elijah ministry being restored. If Elijah flew, why can't Elijah still fly? Y'all know the Lord told me in 62 way the church is doing missionary work. They ain't no never going to get it done. Doing the church work. They're going to have to be some kind of supernatural way. They're going to have to be a supernatural way to... Some of these countries, you couldn't get in them no how. God's going to have to let you fly over the borders. And the radar can't detect the body. And, but in this vision, that was Monday, but in this vision, Thursday, when I had this vision of the cross, the dream of the cross, and then the vision, the Lord appeared in that halo, and he said to me, he said, I spoke to you in a dream to sell all your unnecessary processions And give half of it for the tabernacle over there to be built. And the other half for souls. Said the revival that's now coming forth, unless the man forsake all that he hath and take up the cross and follow me and bear his cross. He cannot be part of this revival. He said, this is for the self-denial. The self-denial. I don't mean God ain't gonna, God can bless you with everything in the world. And the Lord told us a long time ago there'd be another selling man. And all of a sudden he said, Revival, I saw revival. It was an exploit. I haven't witnessed such power of the gospel, such deliverance, such faith, such manifestation. I haven't witnessed such manifestation of faith and of power and that glorious feeling come over me again. Same way I had. Come in my feet. Come over me. And I just look like my body, like the people in space. Look, I just lost, grabbed the lost his hope. And I went up. And some people standing around, they began to see me. They said, well, you, said, you, said, you have to get up in an airplane to do that. I said, that's skydiving. But said, you do it from the ground. I said, can't nobody do that. But people skydives comes down. You know, they go 40,000 feet and they skydive and they come down. And they get so low, they let a parachute out to catch them. But I wasn't, didn't have no parachute to catch me. I was flying, I was laying on my feet normally. And I was, uh, that feeling come over again, and I was just being picked up, and I'd fly, I just, I was, had the red, white, and blue tent up somewhere, and I just, people standing out there watching, and didn't want to go do it. And I just went up and they watched me as I flew over the tent. And I was flying and I landed way over somewhere preaching to the gospel to, to another people. And I preached to the gospel. And I was doing that. And in between times, the Spirit would come on me and I, 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 I needed to learn how to navigate. And so I was practicing in the vision, navigating. Hallelujah. My, my, you know my directions. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. You say you're crazy. You may think we're crazy, but God's going to do strange things. But he ain't going to do it for common people. You ain't going to have this old mind. You're going to have to have some kind of mind. But you know good and well you ain't crazy enough to want to be up there on the air flying in your mind. It's going to take a supernatural power. You say, well, I don't believe it that ever happened. Well, why can't? Brother Meadows, if we believe that the Lord's going to catch us up when he comes, do you believe that? Yes, sir. Do all, how many of y'all believe that there is a coming of the Lord in the sky and he's going to stop and we're going to leave the ground and fly to him? 
Well, if the Lord is the resurrection and the power, why can't he give us some resurrection now? Why can't he give us some quickening power now? Why can't now, if a revival is breaking out, and we've got to get the gospel quickly in all the world, why can't he catch us now up like Elijah was on this mountain, and he was caught over here, like Philip was out here in the desert, and he was caught up, and the Ethiopians saw him no more? Why can't God right now catch us up? He can take us up in the sky 10,000 miles. Why can't he take us across the earth 10,000 miles? See, we limit God. You gotta, if, if we believe that Jesus is going to catch the saints up when he comes, why can't we believe that we can be caught up by the same power? Because the Bible said they were going to be caught up alive. It said the dead was going to be resurrected, but the living saints are going to be caught up alive. Why can't God now catch us up alive? The ministers, the ones that he has chose to go and do this, not just for fun, but for a purpose to catch my body and snatch me up and catch me and put my feet in Africa, put my feet in Ethiopia, put my feet in China, put my feet in Russia. Why can't he catch me up and put me in Russia? Let me preach to those people in the language of the native people. Win thousands. Hallelujah. Why can't he do this? Why can't he raise up an army? I saw him doing it. I saw him doing it fine. And John did say he saw like an a, a angel which is in the zimmers of a man, he thought it was an, he called it an angel because he, he didn't know no more than we do. He was natural. And they didn't have airplanes. And he saw an angel flying through the air carrying a message. What was a man carrying? The everlasting gospel. Who to? To the earth. Now, you know good well angels don't preach. Not angels in heaven. Not, not angels... Not angel Gabriel don't preach. Not angel Michael don't preach. God, if God's going to preach the gospel to angels, angels don't preach. So John in Revelation was seeing something he called an angel. But you know what he was seeing? He was seeing in the last days that God was sending forth the everlasting gospel through to the nations, through the air, and man was flying like a bird. He was flying like an angel. Hallelujah. And he was preaching this gospel of the everlasting kingdom. So don't think I ain't got Bible what I'm talking about. God told you at the beginning, anytime he gives me a vision or speaks to me, I'd have Bible to back it up. And you know, if God's going to preach the gospel with angels, he'd already done it. The angels were before we were, and they never preached the gospel. Huh? Let me tell you something. The Bible said the angels desired to look into this. If they can't, can't even get it, they desired to look into this. They sat around us wanting to get it. They camp about us wanting to get in here and get the Holy Ghost. The Bible said they desired the gospel to preach by the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven whom the angels desired to look into. The, how can the angels preach the gospel when you got to have the anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel? So what John saw in Revelation, it couldn't have been angelic beings. It had to be messengers of God. And in the Bible, the word angel means messenger. So what John really saw, I saw God's messenger flying through the heavens preaching the everlasting gospel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I don't care what you think. It's going to happen. And Jesus just told me this week that it's about to happen. And there's some more, I believe, to be revealed about this. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory. My God, I feel a strange power, a glorious power. I feel a running power. There's somebody to run. No telling what he's going to do.
going to do down at Talladega this week. We're going to be at the army. And don't tell him what he's going to do. He may raise the dead again. Uh, he raised the dead in Florida, and he may raise the graveyard up. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Trouble the world when you get out of the natural and the supernatural. It's old PTL and Sinner God bunch. It's all in the news in Dallas. I don't know how so it is. It was all in the news in Dallas. The little church in Dallas is over there. 700 Club trying to zero in on it, but they always got a couch of a little church that's praying over there and said the revival broke out 16 days ago and they bring up hauling people in in helicopters and everything and they're getting healed and every kind of thing. The Holy Ghost being poured out. People's laying out for hours, been that way for 16 days. Little bitty church over there and they don't know what to do with it. They only met there to pray for four days and something happened. And, and the CT, uh, uh, 700 Club zeroed in on the satellite trying to, to capture it, but they ain't going to take credit for it if it is God. I prophesied that things are going to break out, strange things are going to happen, that catch the newspapers, whole things. Let me tell you, God's getting ready to move, but I tell you, it'll be a Jesus message. It won't be a Trinity message. It won't be a simile God doctrine. It'll be a Jesus message. And what God do, it'll testify Jesus. And what God moves, it'll be a Jesus message. It'll be a Jesus lifting. It'll be a Jesus uh, exalting. It'll be a behold in the Lamb. It'll turn people to the Lamb. It'll behold Christ. It'll put people's eyes on Jesus. I said it'll put people's eyes on the Holy One. It sure won't lift up man. Man's doings. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Holy One of Israel. Thank you, Divine God of heaven and earth. Mighty One of Israel. King of glory. Righteous Father. Divine God. King of kings. Righteous One. I behold you. I love you. I take hold of you. I reach out to you. I command you. I command you, God, to get the people out of the carnal. Get them out of the natural. Jesus name <laughs> Hallelujah <laughs> Glory 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 Thank you Jesus God is real You can believe or not believe God is preparing a people, whether you are partake of it or not. Somebody's going to bear the cross. Somebody's going to deny themselves. Somebody's going to carry Jesus as Lord. Somebody's going to carry Jesus as name. Somebody's going to bear the burden of humanity. Hallelujah. Okay, how wealth you are, how poor you are, somebody's going to move. And when God enriches you, you ain't going to think it's for yourself. You're going to know what it's for. You're going to know that God wants this gospel published and preached into the uttermost parts of the earth. There ain't going to be nothing you wouldn't give to God. You ain't got nothing that you'd hold to. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. This is God's day. This is God's hour. This is the last and final call to the earth. Jesus is fixing to come. It's close to and they're fixing to be a glory reveal that people can't contain the glory that's going to fall in services like this. It's fixing to be a glory. God's going to reveal his glory. He's going to reveal himself. And then there's going to be a man thing. It's going to be the glory of God. Going to, people are going to actually feel like I saw Ben and we looked like we was totally on fire. The fire had just filled the, the house of God, had filled the tents, had filled the congregation, and it was coming up like a field of fire and it was coming up all around them and they was in that flame but they wasn't consumed and the fire didn't burn them. Hallelujah. And the Lord told me and I, I just saw this. He said, I'm, I saw it this week. He said, I'm going to pour out the Holy Ghost and it's going to be like a field of fire but they're not going to be consumed. I saw like a tent of fire. Hallelujah. I saw like he set a tent of fire. He set a church of fire and in Indonesia when that revival broke out, the, the town thought the, 
the church was on fire and come down there and the church was on fire but it wasn't burning and 10,000 got saved. Well, I saw it just like a fire. The church had caught on fire. The house of God, the, the place of worship where God's people were assembled was burning up and the whole world could see the flames of it and they looked and God's people walking around with their hands up illuminated, praising God and nothing could, they wasn't burned. Hallelujah. I said, hey, you said you're getting fire out. It's Jesus. Jesus, Jesus is now. This is his hour. This is his day. And it happened in Indonesia. God let him raise us up. He said, what I'm fixing to bring on the earth is the fulfillment of Luke 17 and Luke 8 and Luke 21. He said, people that ain't full of the Holy Ghost are going to have heart attacks and have nervous breakdown. He said, for this is the day of vengeance of our Lord. He said, this is the day of vengeance. He told me on the 26th of January to prophesy this was the year of the Lord is returning the power of the gospel, but also the year of vengeance. The year of vengeance is declared. This is the year of vengeance. You're going to see vengeance, 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 vengeance. Those that are stubborn, those that are rebellious, those that harden their hearts, those that sit at home, those that don't stay in church, those that don't get back and get on fire, vengeance. You talk about God mopping up. They'll have seven funerals right here, or seven people in right around here will die shortly if you don't pray through today. There's another one of our preachers of Bain had a drastic wreck on the way up yonder. And I think I'd warned him. Never have found them a thing I warned him. And they weren't expecting him to live Wednesday. God put an axe to folks. You don't play with God. Get away from me and think you can. Jeremiah said, talk against me over the walls. That my stuff. Now get them ready. Because I know God's fixing to do something. I heard some bad news yesterday, but also there was a little good news out of it. The bad news give me about another month or six weeks. But I wonder about it. God's with me. God was with Joel. Joel. God was with Job, no matter if they was in a dungeon. God was with him. God was with Moses. God was with Elijah. It didn't make no difference to did to hide in a dungeon. God was with him. God is with me. God is on my part. I'm on his part. I'm standing with Jesus. I'm standing with faith. I'm standing with the, the Lamb of God. I'm reaching out for souls. I'm declaring the power. I'm working the works, and the greater works are coming. I said, I'm working the works, and the greater works is coming. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. And this is the hour that the supernatural power is going to do it, but it's going to take care of the cross. Governor Decor, Georgia, above Decor, they're moving uh, some earth, uh, geologists, earthquake people in two weeks from now, moving them in two weeks from now, they found an earth fall, they're going to drill six miles down in the ground, they said they have found an earthquake fault down through Greenville, South Carolina, down through Atlanta, down through North Georgia. And they drilling down six miles to put something down there to tell there's going to be a bad earthquake in there. But I probably said that years ago. Folks laughed about it. Now they done found it. They said they got an earth fault down through the road, down through Atlanta. Said it reaches all the way to Florida. And they're going to drill six miles down there and put a thing down there try to be detect, try to let the folks know when it's going to happen where they get out. It's going to be severe. Anybody else heard about that? Huh? Yeah, and they're putting it in the ground. Yeah, and all over these places. You know, when we in West Virginia, I said he's coming on down to the Blue Ridge and all down to the 60s, in the latter 60s. And then people laugh at me and think I don't know what I'm talking about. And you ain't never heard such things. When I put an earthquake, I said, there ain't no fault, I'll make one. And they wouldn't be doing it if they didn't know it was down there. I mean, I saw Greenville, South Carolina streets busted and the tallest buildings in Greenville crumbs. We forgot that, but you better start believing. <laughs> Say, man, you don't know how well you are. Yeah. You can have a tombstone on you this time next week.
But God don't want you to have a tombstone on you. So what do you want? He wants you to get out of that altar right now and come there and pray through and say, Lord, I'm going to bear this cross. If it hurt lips the devil, I'm going to bear this cross. I'm going to stick in here because there ain't no place else to go but to Jesus. God placed this tabernacle here in this area to, to save the people, to secure the people, to sustain the people. We'll keep his word. He'll keep you. Get in here and say, Lord, I, I'm going to do right. I'm quitting this church play and I'm getting in here and I'm going to be all the way with God. You can do it. You can take up the cross. They get in these altars and plow through. And I'm going to ask Brother Snow to lead this prayer. Brother Snow, if you've ever prayed for yourself, pray. Jesus. Everybody be back tonight. <laughs>